Welcome to Top 10 Archive. I can't believe these people. If you ever win a large sum of money, chances are you already have something in mind you'd spend it on, right? Well, that's great and all. Just make sure you don't wind up like these 10 spendthrifts, failed accountants, and terrible decision makers. For this installment, we're looking at 10 individuals who won big, only to blow it all in some truly interesting ways. Number 10. Willie Hurt 20 years of making $156,000 per year would likely set up many people to be comfortable for quite some time, assuming they don't make the rash decision of up and quitting their job or spending willy-nilly. No pun intended. Yeah, right. Well, with his substantial yearly payment, Willie purchased the one thing that could console him in his times of decent wealth. Crack. Hurt's addiction spiraled out of control, leading to a divorce and a murder charge. A financial advisor may have warned Willie to take the lump sum for maximum profits, but it doesn't take an educated economist to tell you not to blow your money on an addictive substance with no long-term benefits. Number 9. Suzanne Mullins Suzanne Mullins is just a regular middle-class person, like most people. Unlike the majority of us, though, she at one time had $4.2 million in her name. For a period of 11 years, Suzanne Mullins was on top, or so everyone had thought. Now, Suzanne had allegedly been left with $1 million in medical bills from her now-deceased son-in-law. But after splitting the remaining money three ways with her husband and daughter, the 20 annual payments of $47,778.84 weren't coming to her fast enough. So, to expedite her money, she turned to the People's Lottery Foundation for a loan in the amount of nearly $198,000. When the rules for the lotto changed in 2000 to allow for lump sum payments, Mullins took the remainder of her money and ran, halting payments to the foundation in 2001. It took 11 years to go from a millionaire to more than $154,000 into debt. Number 8. Tonda Lynn Dickerson when you win a large sum of money like Tonda Lynn Dickerson did in 1999, you have to be smart. You're on everybody's radar, from the IRS to even your closest friends. After burning her Waffle House co-workers by not sharing the $5 million lump sum winnings as they had promised, Tonda Lynn decided to create an S-Corporation to hold the winnings, awarding her parents and siblings 51% of the stock. Despite filing a lawsuit against her claiming that there was an oral contract, Tonda's co-workers walked away with nothing. But the IRS was keen to take over $700,000, stating that by sharing stock with her family, Tonda had essentially gifted them over $2 million, making that money subject to a gift tax. Tonda fought hard, but lost against the long arm of the taxman. Her argument, quite ironically, mirroring the same claim she fought her Waffle House co-workers on. Number 7. Ibi Rangheoli Nothing can come between a married couple quicker than a large sum of money. And in the case of the Rangheolis, who won $5 million in 1995, this story is no exception, especially when the spending of that money only involves one spouse. Ibi handled the family finances. And bringing home almost $20,000 a month as a gynecologist, her husband, Joseph, was none the wiser to how the money was being spent. Gambling sprees, new homes, a condo, and a glass mirror business were just a portion of where the money started to disappear to. Over $2 million was divided between two of Evie's sons from other men, and before long, the money was gone. Ironically, so was Evie, who was found dead on her couch in the family mansion. Courts determined that Joseph had killed his wife, and though the money was likely a cause, he contested not guilty during trial. Number 6. Sharon Tirabasi 35-year-old Hamilton, Ontario resident Sharon Tirabasi received life-changing news when she found out she had won a little over $10.5 million in a local lottery. Her check from the Ontario Lottery and Gaming Corp should have given her the ability to live comfortably for the rest of her life but it only took about nine years for the mother of six to find her way back to the lower working class. Sharon felt the charity bug and dished out $2.75 million to family members, purchased homes to rent out at low rates, and offered loans for business ventures. When not being charitable, she took vacations to Cancun, Florida, Las Vegas, and the Caribbean, 
and purchased a boat, a Hummer, a Mustang, a Charger, and an Escalade. Before too long, Sharon's life of luxurious parties, exotic trips, charitable attempts, and designer clothes turned back into a life of riding the bus for part-time employment. Number 5. Michael Carroll From millionaire to cookie factory employee? Michael Carroll's story is not too different from other disgraced lottery winners. Carroll was the winner of a £9 million sum from the British Lottery and, as you are likely to expect at this point, found every terrible means of blowing every last pound. Carroll turned to drugs, snorting cocaine through a casing of a real solid gold pen and partying harder than his body was used to. Surprisingly, Carroll survived his ordeal of drugs in excess, but his fortune reportedly ran out after 10 years of spending. Though the money may have run out, Carroll is completely pleased with his menial job and modest possessions. Number 4. Janite Lee If you can blow through $18 million in 8 years, you may be doing something wrong. Such is the case of Janite Lee, South Korean immigrant who, 8 years after winning big, filed for bankruptcy. Lee's money went all over the place, from friends asking for loans to donating $277,000 to political candidates. Lee even made a donation between $500,000 and $1 million to Washington University, putting her on the parents' honor roll as a Life Elliott benefactor. Towards the end of her reign on top, Lee racked up nearly $1.6 million in loans to the Royal Banks of Missouri and lost over $347,000 at casinos near St. Louis. Number 3. Billy Bob Harrell Jr. June of 1997 could have been the best time of Billy Bob Harrell Jr.'s life, having just won a jackpot of $31 million from the Texas Lotto. Billy was in a constant struggle with money. So when the annual winnings started to come through, he and his family breathed a little easier. Unfortunately, Billy made the first big mistake that most lottery winners make by quitting his job and then launching into a spending spree of a family vacation to Hawaii, hefty donations to his church, and extravagant gifts to friends and family. Apparently, $1.24 million a year wasn't enough. So, Billy sought out a company to pay out his remaining winnings in a lump sum, a deal that he clearly lost out on. Shortly after his windfall, Billy's wife left him, a fatal blow to a man that had already been defeated. Billy killed himself because of the weight of his failed marriage and poor financial decisions. Number 2. Americo Lopez When friends and family get involved in anything that has to do with money, very infrequently is the ending a happy one. For construction worker Americo Lopez, the winner of $38.5 million, the outcome was no different. Lopez and five friends would pool money together to purchase lottery tickets for years, but when they finally had winning numbers, Lopez didn't come back to them with good news. He took the money and ran. After taxes, Lopez received a check for over $17 million and quit his job, citing foot surgery as the cause. When the friends found out about Lopez's transgression, they sued and were awarded the money that was rightfully theirs. Each of the five co-workers walked away with $4 million. Number 1. Andrew Jackson Whitaker Jr. $315 million. Let me say that again. $315 million should last somebody an entire lifetime, especially when the winner of that fortune is a 55-year-old man who was already worth $17 million. Whitaker was quick to dish out close to a $15 million split between charitable donations and gifts for the woman who sold him the ticket, but that would still have left him with plenty to live on. If not for legal troubles, his frequency to strip clubs, a drinking problem, and a series of alleged robberies, the winnings could have possibly lasted. It only took four years for Whitaker's winnings to be depleted, and all he has to show for his glory days is a $1.5 million lawsuit against him by Caesars Atlantic City for bounced checks used to cover gambling losses. Do you know anyone who's won it big? What would you do if you won the lottery? Let us know in the comment section below. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website, top10archive.net. Have an idea for a future Top 10 video? Leave us a comment on any video.